and welcome to our video recording or class on risk assessment. I hope you are finding your studies enjoyable and interesting. So in this recording or class, we are going to focus on risk assessment as required by ISA 315 para 25. Now, first of all, just briefly discuss on the thinking behind risk assessment. So we are going to find out that an audit performed in according to ISA is what we call a risk-based audit. So why go for a risk-based audit? Normally, if you look at most entities are generating millions of transactions. So it's next to impossible for auditors to test each and every transaction simply because the cost outweighs the benefit. So to address that problem, auditors then follow a risk-based audit. And what does this mean? Auditors will identify high risk areas and focus their auditing efforts on those particular areas. Which is why this topic is the backbone of the auditing process. And ordinarily you find out that audit quality in practice is compromised if auditors fail to do a proper risk assessment. So what are some of the key learning outcomes on completion of this lecture? I expect you to, have, to be able to understand the objectives of performing a risk assessment as well as identifying the components of audit risk, being able to identify audit risk at over certain level and assertion level. We are going to note that in most of the examinations, we are going to be required to perform a risk assessment where you identify audit risk at either over financial assessment level or at assertion level. And then, you should be able to properly describe audit risks, both at overall and at assertion level, and then also to briefly understand the responsibility of auditors with regard to significant risks. So this part is part one of a two-part lecture recording. So the first question is, why even bother performing a risk assessment? So like I alluded to earlier on, risk assessment performs with or is the key driver to the way the audit will be done. Because auditors cannot test 100%. So the question is, which areas should we test as auditors? And the answer is, we test those areas which we identify to be high risk areas. So risk of what? So recap, audit risk, what is it? So from your undergraduate auditing studies, I'm sure you define what you mean by audit risk. The risk that the auditor will express an inappropriate audit opinion. And then what are the key drivers to this risk? So what makes up the audit risk? So we've got risk of material misstatements and the risk of detection risk. So what is risk of material misstatements? So the, here risk of material misstatements we are saying when the management prepares the financial statements and they give to us as auditors to audit, there's a risk that those financial statements may contain or may be misstated. So a risk of material mistake is further broken down into two main components. The first one being inherent risk. So here we are saying, due to the nature of transactions or account balances or disclosures, they may be prone to misstatements. So I'll give you a classic example. I'm sure when you're going to do it, when you cover if it's nine in financial accounting, and you do maybe impairment or assessment of credit losses, one of the the most complex requirement in IFRS 9. So because of the nature of the requirement of that standard, it also means it's prone to misstatements or management are prone to make mistakes and errors in the application of that standard. So when you come to the auditing aspect, the auditor then says because of the complexities around these standard requirements, it then also goes hand in hand that there's a high chance that management might have made errors and mistakes which is the inherent risk we are talking about. The other component of risk of material statement is control risk. So here we are saying the control that management would have put in place may fail to detect material misstatements, detect or prevent material misstatements. And then detection risk, here this normally talks to the auditor's ability. So this is the risk on the auditor. Risk of material misstatements it's on the financials. Detection on the auditors say the auditor's procedures may fail to pick out material misstatements in the financials given to the audit. So a classic example is 
If we want that people to do a proper risk assessment, it may actually increase detection risk because we are going to perform procedures which will not enable the order to identify material misstatements. Now, risk at overall financial statement level, what are these? So the key word there is overall financial statement level. So these are those risks that are pervasive to the financial statements as a whole. What do you mean by pervasive? I can use a simple example to say if that risk or misstatement is to okay, the order can conclude the financial statements are not fairly presented. That's pervasive. So I know just what about one specific element. So it's a risk that affects more than one element on the financial statement. So you can find that in combination a number of risks can result or can end up having a pervasive effect on the financial statement. Then the other risk is the risk at assertion level. So what are these? So at assertion level, they affect account balances or class of transactions. So the moment I talk about account balance and class of transactions, automatically you need to think of the IFRS requirements of these class of transactions account balances. Why? Because auditors could not audit a set of financial statements prepared in accordance with IFRS. So how do I know that the account balance is misstated? Is misstated? Normally I need to think back to IFRS. So risk at assertion level, you need to connect to your accounting requirements. And you are going to discuss this further. We'll look at specific examples of risk at assertion level. Then the other question is what are assertions? So on this one, I encourage you to go back to your auditing notes. There's your two eyes of for the list of assertions and what they, what they mean from an auditing context. Now, how do audit risk arise? So we are going to start off with the risk of material misstatements. So I'm saying the financial that has been given by management, there's a risk that they may be materially misstated. But what causes those misstatements? So the first one is, there might be a possible misapplication of IFRS, which can cause the financials to be misstated. Or someone could say, the Commerce Act has got some financial reporting requirements. Failure to comply with those requirements may again result in misstatements. So how do you pick this out? So I would advise that normally when you are doing your accounting questions, and we have got those areas that you normally get wrong. From an auditing perspective, those are our risk areas. We are saying management, when they prepare their financial statements, there's also, chances are also high that they may also get those things incorrect. And this is what we effectively call our inherent risk. Then the other component of risk of material statement is control risk, which is controls put in place by management may fail to detect or prevent material misstatements, effectively control control risk. Then detection risk, like we said before, this emanates from the owner's inability to gather sufficient appropriate audit evidence to detect material misstatements. Now the question is, how do I identify audit risk, both from an audit practice perspective or within an examination context. So from an exam perspective, ordinarily in your case stand, we are going to give you information about the Kanban. In practice, the order would have done understanding of the ended activities, discussion with management, obtained a set of financial statements, he said, got an information about the Kanban from maybe from the internet. From that raw information, then the order will go through the process of identifying the risk of material misstatement. But for you guys, within the context of an exam, that is the purpose of the case study, will give you information on the Kanban. And from that information, you should identify all the risks. But how do you do it? Number one, you need to be able to identify what you call a risk triggers. So risk triggers is information which you are given in the scenario, which is pointing toward the possibility of the existence of a risk or of a what can go wrong. Let's use an example. Risk of material statements. So for this one in the case study, look for information 
which might point toward the possibility of incorrect application of IFRS or non-compliance with the company's laws and regulations. So let's say, as an example, the company imports inventory. So by virtue of importing inventory, what are the account requirements? So you link to IS2 and IS21. The company supports the capitalize that inventory using the spot exchange rates. So what can go wrong? What is the risk? Management might use an incorrect exchange rate. So that is my risk. So because the company is importing inventory, there is a risk that the incorrect or inappropriate exchange rates may be used. So as you can see from that identification, I, have, I first of all have to pick the trigger from the case study. Because without that trigger of importing inventory, then I don't have a risk of incorrect use of exchange rates. Another example of a control risk. Let's say you've been given information around changes in internal control environment. It could be a new key employee employed or the company does not have proper governance structures. Those changes or that information may point towards control weaknesses which may lead to material misstatements. So for example here, the fact that of a new finance manager, what does it mean? Errors and mistakes may go undetected in the preparation of financial statements. Why? Because this guy is not yet familiar with the client's systems. Then, identifying what risk further. Detection risk. How do you pick detection risk in the examination? We are now looking for information in the case study which is pointing toward the auditor's inability to gather sufficient appropriate audit evidence. Remember detection risk. Audit procedures fail to gather evidence. So example could be, you are told in the case study, or from the case study, you can pick up that auditors have been given a tight audit deadline, which may mean that they do not have enough time to perform sufficient appropriate audit procedures resulting in them failing to gather sufficient appropriate audit evidence. So in these whole discussions in terms of how to identify audit risk, the most important aspect is, are you able to pick out the trigger from the case study? And please not, do not create your own triggers. Read, understand the case study. From that understanding, pick out any risk triggers. Once you've got the risk trigger, then you can highlight the risk arising. So ladies and gentlemen, this is it for part one on our lecture on risk assessment. See you in part two, where we take it further on how to describe audit risk, as well as how to differentiate between risk at overall and risk at assessing level. Thank you.